back to How to Feed a Loon. I'm Chris. And I'm Wesley. My little... Harsh. No, don't say it. The loon. The loon. The loon. The loon. I, I just wanted to call you something, but if I called you that, I would give away what we're making. <laughs> and everyone's like, well, what are you making? Although right. I already know well, what we're making. Why don't we tell them what we're making then? We're making... <laughs> Southern Hush Puppies. Everyone already knew that. I'm not your little hush puppy Well, either. that's true. You're not. You're, you're my big hush puppy. We do say hush puppy a lot. <laughs> hush <little> puppy. <laughs> so hush puppies are a hilarious, funny name for something that are so delicious. I yeah. was just saying, I don't know where that term came from, it's but so it funny. is so good. And people around the world that are watching are probably like, what are hush puppies? Well, they're about to find out. Yeah. Uh, and they're, we, go ahead. They're super popular down in the southern part of the United States, which is where we live. Yeah. And um, so we, we like to eat them with some fried fish. That's right. They're really great with fried fish. Mm -hmm. So let's get going. I mean, well, let me first of all, let me and talk about this. tartar sauce, too. By we'll this, talk about that later. By this big old contraction. Yeah, the don't contraption. touch it. I know. So this this is a this is an electric deep fryer. You're like, wow. Okay, I don't have one of those. That's all right. Um, they're not really expensive. We love this one. If you do any kind of deep frying, which we do from time to time, um, we like the good where you got a whole basket. It's got thing. there's like a, a, a cavity that you can you know so you can fry more things. But the really great thing about this this is a Cuisinart and they're a top notch. Um, but it's not really expensive. And um, you, what's really important in frying and deep frying is maintaining the correct temperature because if you get it too high, then it it cooks it too quickly and it usually burns it on the inside, on the outside, and it's not cooked on right. the inside. The, what's a really bad, which a lot of people have the issue with, is they don't have the oil hot enough. And then it the, the food stays in the oil forever. And then you get that and you're like, this tastes like nothing but oil because it's just absorbed all that oil. So you got the, the correct temperature and maintaining that temperature is really important. So that's why a, one of these contraptions really helps you maintain that temperature. And but if, if you haven't guessed yet, we're actually going to fry the hush puppies. We are, these are fried <laughs> hush puppies. That is right. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can absolutely use like a, a Dutch oven, something yeah. that's good and sturdy. Just put some vegetable oil in there or some peanut oil, some lard. And get it up to 350. And use a thermometer. That's the only thing I'm going to tell you that you should do is use like a candy thermometer, something that will read uh, 350 degrees because you want that temperature to be right. Okay, I've talked way too yes, much. Yes, yes. Okay, so, so over here, so we've got two things that you have to deal with when you're making hush puppies. You have to deal with your dry ingredients and you have to deal with your Wet ingredients. You have to ingredients. deal with them. <laughs> yeah, I gotta so deal just with them. deal with it. Yeah. Okay. So I've got wet ingredients here. So I've got two eggs that I've slightly beaten, and I've got a cup of buttermilk. Buttermilk. Buttermilk is quintessential Southern cooking. That's this is so very good. similar to Southern cornbread, which. Yeah, and then we got hot sauce, which is another quintessential thing for Southern. It's cooking. quintessential. It's quintessential. Da, 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 da. And I like to douse my. And don't worry, this does not make it like really spicy. It just I gives like a little it, added flavor. You can, if you want it spicy, you can put yeah. a ton in there. Okay. So I'm going to do this, and while I'm mixing this, Chris, would you yeah, tell I, them about those? So dry let me just tell you also about this this thing. As I'm being very careful, as I'm getting closer <laughs> to my husband, um, this little it, the way that, that this hooks in right here, you very touch it and it comes unattached, and it sort of seems annoying. Yes. But the reason they do that is for a very important reason. Um, it's because you've got a vessel of really hot hot oil that you do not want to come falling onto the floor because. It would be disaster, especially with yeah. a little child, a little dog running by. Okay, so and so, you've so what a lot, happens? And I what happens? What happens is that this you barely touch it and it'll completely come um, off. So it's a little annoying, but it's super important. That's why we're being really careful. <laughs> so for the dry it's ingredients, it's important to share it is. that. It's, safety is important. Okay, carry on. So in here we have a cup and a half of self-rising flour. Yes. And then we're gonna have a cup and a half of this really. Uh, it's not that fine. What is it? It's cornstarch, but it. No, it's cornmeal. Corn meal. It's like rough cornmeal. <laughs> what? It's a coarse ground. A coarse ground. Thank he was you. not going to do this, but anyway, he is because apparently I'm talking too much. Yeah. But um, it's coarse ground. Very typical in southern cooking is uh, you want that with a little bit of texture, uh, but you can also get the really fine cornmeal if that's what your preference is. Exactly. It's no, no big deal. We also have a little baking powder. We're going to do a. That half is a half a teaspoon, teaspoon of baking powder, and yes, that just helps. Just the self-rising is already going to have that leavener in it that's going to yeah. help it uh, get fluffy, but this uh, just helps that's it along. a quarter cup of quarter cup of sugar. sugar. See? Oh, see, see, you did it. I this, told you to stay away from this it. This is what I, I knew it was coming, <laughs> so that's why I said. Uh, so you and stay then, over here, and yeah, I'll stay over here. And then here. I have to you bear with the beep because I bring it back to 350. <laughs> so, so I put thing. in the so we put in the quarter cup of sugar, and now we're also going to do a half, a, no, actually a teaspoon of salt. Just to get it yeah, good. Yeah, a teaspoon and of salt. So we're going to do that. We're going to bring that all together. Okay, let me get and then this one other thing way. that we like to throw in is a little chopped onion. 
Yeah. Okay. It just adds some flavor to it. I really like it. You can add the, okay, we get it. You're ready. <laughs> so um, you can add that chopped in onion in before you uh, do the wet ingredients or after the ingredients. It's I just like all to kind just of throw them in so they get nice and coated with the wedding. I agree. The dry That's a good way to do it. And yeah. a lot, you know, some people are like, I don't like onions. And um, this, as it fries, it really, it just sort of almost like dissolves and melts into the into the hush puppy. So it just gives so it just good. the essence of it. You guys, it. these hush puppies are delicious. So I now, know. after you've got, got your dry uh, ingredients all mixed up, we're gonna put in. Have we to put, put a little our, muscle into it. We put in our wet. Yeah. So there we go. Look at that. So now. it's gonna be a pretty dry. I mean, it's gonna be kind of sticky. Now this is what I love to add in. At Yay! The, and so we said you had a cup beer. of the, a cup of the buttermilk, right? Okay. I did. So this is just your favorite beer. It's it's October right now when we're making this. We live in Texas, so we're doing a Shiner Bach Oktoberfest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. There you go. So I usually add about a quarter of a cup to this to the batter. Um, but you can eyeball it. If yeah, it you needs eyeball more. what you want to. You, like I said, this is going to be sticky. Don't, don't um, touch that thing. Thank you. Thank it's going to be sticky, um, but that's about the right consistency. Ooh, it's still kind of like a, thick. a really thick pancake batter. Yeah, or cake batter. Oh, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even thicker than a cake batter. Okay, oh, that's beautiful. That. Now, now okay. here's the key. What's that's, the key? I, I don't know. Okay, let's watch out for that. <laughs> let's focus on not hitting okay. this again. Okay. I got this good. I think mixed. that's good. So now what we're gonna, all you gotta do is just take a spoonful. You can do this with hands. I find it's easier with just a spoon. If you've got a basket, lower the basket in. Three, did I say 350 degrees Fahrenheit is what you want your oil at? Make sure you've got the right temperature, okay? And now we're just going to take a spoonful of this. A spoonful of of uh, dough, puppy dough. Hush puppy dough makes the world all better. And so now yeah. what this, you may also notice that this dough is kind of lumpy. That's okay, that's that's actually the way we want it. Um, okay, you just, just drop, drop that in, in there. And it gets a cute little ball forms, It just kind of magically forms this cute little ball. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, oh, this nice. is a great consistency. Thank you. No, it is. You did a really good job, Lynn. <laughs> okay, so now we're so going to do this whole bat. We're just going to keep on doing yeah. these. And, and when um, we come back, we're going to have some hush puppies. These take about eight minutes, and you want them to be golden brown. And, and um, you know, and again, they're not, they may not be perfectly shaped, but these are homemade. That makes them even better, okay? Oh, yay. Yay. Oh, all right. That is so beautiful. I Yay. mean, all right. So these are that looks gorgeous. so They're good. Cooked to perfection. So again, we did these in a couple of batches. Yes. Um, we they literally only take about eight minutes until they get this beautiful golden color. Um, I usually use like a couple of forks to kind of because they want to bob around a little bit. And, yeah. And, um, they're kind of like you and trying to sleep. <laughs> um, they can't get comfortable. Um, so and I also use if you have one of these. This is called a spider. This is great for like digging up fried fish and things like that. It just helps kind of. Yeah. You know, in, in cooking. Um, so then, what we did after they, you know, you can tell there one's going to be ready sooner than the other one. So you just yep. uh, lift it out and then put it on a towel that's been lined with paper towels, just to let a little of that extra grease um, go away. And they are ready to eat. Yes, but let's. So we like to serve them with tartar sauce, mm. tartar okay. sauce and malt vinegar. Mm -hmm. So good, just like our fish. So look at that. Isn't that the greatest little uh, tartar sauce? We actually made this from scratch. Should we show them how we did it? Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. <laughs>
that is tartar sauce. And it's Let me so tell you, you'll good. never you'll never buy the bo bottled stuff this again. This is so fresh. It's so fresh. So and fresh. So, delicious. And so um, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, You're not gonna, gonna joke yeah. around. Look at that. I just want to break one of these open so people can see inside. Hush, Look at that. puppy. Isn't that is, so that is a hush puppy. It's so, and what you want is it really crisp and crunchy on the outside and soft and billowy on the inside. Oh, I heard it crunch. <laughs> it's the best thing in the world. Yeah, I can't make up my mind whether I want tartar sauce or malt, malt vinegar. vinegar. I'm the same. So I use I, both. When I do my fish and chips, which these are great with. One side malt vinegar, one side. I, I know, I go back and forth and back and forth, but are they good? Are they perfect? Are they fantastic? Are they everything you've ever hoped for in life? I just love them. Sorry, I'm talking with my mouth That's all right, we're all used to it. Mm, 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 mm. Those are delicious. And they've got that lovely, and I love the onion in there. I know, yeah, it's subtle and it's, it's, it's just perfect. Oh. And crunchy on the, and a little bit of sweetness, it all comes together. I could eat these. All day. <laughs> well, and you know what else I could do? What could you do? Well, actually, you could say something. I could say something. Yes. <laughs> These are 100% Luna Proof. Yay! That makes me so happy. I want to juggle yes. hush puppies. Yeah, juggle them. I'm just. I'm not gonna <laughs> juggle them. I'm. Oh wow. Yeah, that is perfect. Look, people. I'm just gonna dunk this that is right a in great there. I'm batch. double dunking. This is D a good batch. Dunking there. I'm dunking. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you hear the little crunch on the outside? So good. I love you, Hush Puppy. <laughs> now you can get this recipe and many more on howtofeedaloon.com. These really are good. I this know. one hits the spot. Mm -hmm. So go to our social media, like us, share us, tell all your friends about Chris and Wesley and how to feed a loom. Yeah, and these and, Hush um, Puppies. And these Hush Puppies. And have a Hush Puppy party. <laughs> Put yeah. on your Hush Puppies and make Hush Puppies. I'm going to tell your puppies to Hush! Hush Puppies. Oh my gosh, especially, <laughs> yeah. Especially if they're eating your hush puppies. <laughs> bye bye, y'all. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> now, if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Well, that's right. And to get more amazing recipes like yeah. this, just click right here. Click, subscribe, <laughs> click, click all. Subscribe. Just click and subscribe. <laughs>